I was watching a local radio station live stream just a few days ago, and the topic of the island's recent electricity woes came up. There's loads shedding over the weekend. Is there someone I, we can blame? Dude, That's I, some Jason I, Bourne I, stuff I, you got I, going on. Good morning, General Moreland. Good to have you online. Good morning, Ray. Bill Parkinson uh, introduced legislation over the weekend uh, to make it easier, I guess, for uh, GPA to, to take care of, handle procurement for the maintenance of the diesel units that we've got. Yeah, it's called a band-aid, right? Oh. The, the whole system's falling apart. Get ready for 24-7 load shedding. Many people here have been complaining about the inconveniences that they are experiencing through recent load shedding events. And while I might admit that this is not something we are accustomed to as Americans, it is steadily becoming the new reality that we live with today. In recent months, and specifically since Guam was hit hard by Typhoon Mawar, the island's electric production capacity has suffered. Rotating brownouts, referred to as load shedding, have become the norm here. Load shedding happens when a power supplier cannot meet the demand for electricity and the supplier will cut power to parts of the grid to protect power generating assets. One of the reasons load shedding is happening here on Guam is because of increased power demand outstripping local power capacity in conjunction with electrical generation breakdowns and recent environmental challenges. In the wake of Mawar, the challenges on our already fragile power generation infrastructure are on the rise. Guam Power Authority informed its customers this past August that potential outages were likely and will be conducted according to a published schedule, only if the anticipated demand from customers between the hours of 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. exceeds GPA's available energy capacity. Since then, GPA has been implementing these rotating outages lasting up to one hour, reconnecting all affected customers at the top of each hour, if not sooner. Whether in Guam or the Philippines, life on an island is challenging enough, and for the utility operators dealing with both routine problems and sometimes very unusual ones, providing reliable power in an extremely isolated location can intensify every challenge. Outside of the ever-present potential for violent weather, there is the heavy reliance on expensive diesel generation, which has erased all gains in consumer savings in the last couple of years, almost everywhere. Locally, the GPA also must contend with the things wholly unique to the island itself, and here in Guam, it's the brown tree snake. Not native to the island, this snake is thought to have been accidentally imported via the Navy ships during World War II, and it has thrived here. These snakes have an affinity for causing power outages by getting inside transformers and other distribution infrastructure. But despite its battles with aging equipment, mother nature, and snakes, the Guam utility has seen customer satisfaction ratings rise over the past decade, along with its operational efficiency. After receiving a Smart Grid Investment Grant in 2010, the grid modernization effort began with the deployment of the advanced metering infrastructure which lowered power costs and improved service, according to officials at GPA. Using voltage reports to track and isolate vegetation-related issues has helped focus tree trimming efforts. Response times to outages have definitely improved with the increased ability to guide field crews during restoration efforts. In the Philippines, the government affirmed its commitment to implement the Smart Grid Policy Framework as one of the strategies to achieve its sustainable energy agenda, and hence the Philippine Energy Plan 2020-2040 was adopted. The Smart Grid, as related to power quality, will help with improving outage prevention there in the future. When a company becomes consumer-centric, customer service becomes paramount and expectations will rise. When those expectations are lowered, everyone cries. The concept of consumer centricity remains evasive in the Philippines, where expectations throughout much of the country there is low. At the beginning of this post, I mentioned I was tuned into a radio live stream broadcast. I heard so many negative comments that I just had to chime in. I suggested that many Guamanians should spend some time in the provinces in the Philippines and they will stop bitching about load shedding. They will also come back to Guam with a renewed appreciation for what we have here. 
Another viewer couldn't believe that I was advocating for lowering our expectations and then proceeded to call me crazy. Over the years, I have written countless blog articles and have done several videos where I suggest not packing one's suitcase full of expectations when moving to this part of the world. This is Southeast Asia, and it is what it is. Or like they say in the Philippines, Bahala Na. Maybe he is not all that familiar with the blackouts on the U.S. mainland recently. Between 2013 and 2021, the average duration of a power outage in the United States grew from approximately 3.5 hours to more than 7 hours. A Wall Street Journal analysis found that over the last 20 years up through 2020, the number of annual major outages in the United States increased from less than two dozen to over 180. And it's gotten worse in recent years. According to Business Insider, the length of outages in 2020 was double what it was in 2013. A report last year by the American Society of Civil Engineers found that 70% of transmission and distribution lines were far past the second half of their expected 50-year lifespans. I'll leave a link to that Business Insider article in the description box below this video. But it's not just the weather or the climate that's making the U.S. electrical grid shakier. Maximizing profits has taken precedence over reliability and is resulting in an electrical system plagued by lagging maintenance and soaring costs. In summary, America's energy system is woefully unprepared to handle an uncertain future. Relating to my own personal experiences, we share our time between Guam and the Philippines, and we are all too familiar with the luxury of having reliable electric service and the inconveniences of not having any power. In the Philippines, brownouts can happen at any time, and nobody really knows how long the power will be out. Just this past August in the Philippines, I counted 35 brownouts in the first 28 days that we were there, and there could have possibly been more as we were not always at home. The electrical generation and distribution system in the Philippines leaves a lot to the imagination. Here on Guam, we rarely have unscheduled outages, and when we do, we tend to get it back relatively quickly. I will point out, as seen in the video here, that most of Guam's main transmission lines have been well hardened with huge concrete poles that can sustain even the strongest of storms. But that's not to say that Guam doesn't have its problems, like with aging equipment. With aging equipment, the expectation of failures is not well received here in Guam. Most of the blame by local folks seems to be aimed at leadership and the government for the problems that Guam faces today, and it's very possible that they have done the best that they can. But I will say this, the boots on the ground folks deserve more credit than they get for all the great work in keeping outages to a minimum. During a recent outage here at our condominium complex, we lost our large transformer and the entire complex's power was lost. The GPA is very responsive during outage events and are quick to respond. And the scenario here at home is a good example of how responsive GPA can be. This outage was reported almost immediately when the transformer blew as many residents heard the loud noise that it made. GPA was on site within the hour with a response team, an evaluation was conducted, and the issue was quickly identified. We needed a new transformer. But the scope of this transformer replacement project was not a simple one. Access first had to be gained to the transformer site, which meant dismantling the tennis court fence. My initial thoughts were that we would be without power for an extended length of time, like maybe a day or two. If this were to happen in the Philippines, it could take several days to get this remediated. At the onset of this outage, I was already planning to spend most of the day in the water to stay cool. Four hours later, our power was restored, and in the end, not even my nap time was delayed. Personally, I can't tell you how grateful I was for these GPA workers to get our power back so quickly. And I think it's unfair that they take a lot of heat from the consumer at large. On Guam, just like in the Philippines, 
There are benefits to living in a metro area as opposed to living out in the farthest reaches of any electrical circuit. And when you find yourself living at the end of the line, you tend to get serviced last also. We as Americans have a lot to be thankful for this Thanksgiving and much more than many Americans will ever know. To everyone, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving and thank you for watching.